false assurance of heaven. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. Paul asked the Corinthian Christians to consider a sobering question. Am I really a Christian? Examine yourselves. Paul the Apostle writes to this congregation and also writes to us to examine ourselves. Paul writes to you and me to test ourselves. So, this message is not for you to examine me, neither is it a sermon for me to examine you. This sermon is not for you to put the spotlight on other Christians. We do that too often. Today we're going to put the spotlight on ourselves. I am to examine myself just as you are to examine yourselves. Enduring Bible Commentary states the following regarding 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. We are rightly concerned that every believer has the assurance of salvation and knows how to endure the attacks that come in this area from Satan. At the same time, we also understand that there are some who assume or presume they are Christians when they are not. It is a challenge to all. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. We are often very ready to examine and test others, but first, and always first, we must examine and test ourselves. That was the trouble at Corinth. They criticized Paul and failed to examine themselves. Some Christians are genuinely convinced they are Christians when they are not. They are sure that they are on the right path, but they are not. They are completely and utterly convinced that they are Christians. They are not. They are sincerely living their lives, believing that they are going to heaven, but they are not going to enter the kingdom of God. This is the biggest problem in the church right now. It is of the utmost importance that you are correct about your assurance. Unfortunately, there is a false assurance in churches right now. Many people have an assurance in their salvation, and yet they have absolutely no right to be assured. Many people are completely convinced when they have absolutely no right to be convinced. By the end of this message, I want you to be sure without a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die this moment, you are going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow me to ask you a question, which I have asked a lot of Christians over the years. How do you know you are a Christian? Answer the question, how do you know you are a Christian? Eight out of 10 times, the answer I receive to the question is the same. The answer I receive more often than not is because on the quote, 22nd July, 1984, I prayed the prayer of salvation. Or another answer I receive is, I came into Christ when I was 21. Now the problem with this response is that the assurance of salvation is based on a prayer that you made as an individual, or a prayer that you made, or something you did, or something you came to believe in. And as a result, your assurance of salvation is based on yourself. And there are other people who, when you ask the same question, how do you know you are a Christian? They answer the question stating, the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. He cleansed me with his blood. And notice the difference. Their salvation is rooted in not what they did or who they are or what they have done. Their salvation is rooted in a person. The person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Their assurance is not in themselves. Their assurance is not in a prayer they prayed 30 years ago. Their assurance is not in something that they came to believe. Their assurance is not in how holy they think they are. Their assurance is not inward, but rather it is outward in what Jesus did on the cross. Brothers and sisters, your assurance of salvation should not be in yourself or your denomination or in the fact that you attend church or that you were born in the church. Your assurance of salvation needs to be in Christ Jesus, the one and only way to God the Father. So many people struggle with this idea 
that one day they are going to heaven and the next day they are not. Allow me to explain. They believe that because this morning I had quiet time with the Lord, I prayed for 30 minutes, therefore today I am going to heaven. The next day they don't have quiet time with the Lord. Then their assurance of heaven is gone because they didn't have quiet time with the Lord. They now believe that if they were to die today, they are going to hell and on and on and on. One day they are assured of heaven because of what they did and how they have behaved. And the next day they are not assured of heaven because of how they behaved. Now I wanna ask you a question. Where is this individual's assurance of heaven in? Is there assurance of heaven in the Lord Jesus? Or is there assurance in their own hands? This is a works-based salvation. And the problem with a works-based salvation is that you will never ever be good enough for heaven with your own goodness. This is why salvation is a free gift. Another perfect example of this false assurance of heaven is an individual believes that because today they lived a holy day by their own standards, they did not commit a sin. Therefore, if they die today, they are going to heaven. The next day they committed a sin. And as a result, they now believe that if they were to die today, they are going to hell and on and on and on. One day they are assured of heaven because of how they behaved, and the next day they are not assured of heaven because of how they behaved. Now I want to ask you the same question again. Where is this individual's assurance of heaven in? Is there assurance of heaven in the Lord Jesus? Or is there assurance in their own hands and their own behavior? Examine yourselves. Is your assurance in the Lord or in your own behavior? This is in no way a message to encourage people to sin, because as I am about to explain, true salvation will lead a person away from a life of sin. Foundationally, salvation is through repentance and belief. Time and time again, in the Bible, we see this phrase, repent and believe, repent and believe. We don't see the phrase, pray a prayer once in your life. We don't see the phrase, give your life to Christ. But we do see this phrase, repent and believe. So what does repent mean? Repentance is not merely the confession of sins. What true repentance is, it is confessing and forsaking your sins. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Repentance is not merely remorse. You can feel remorseful about your sins and not repent. You can be sorry for your sins because you are facing the repercussions of your sins. Judas was sorry for his sins and never repented. Repentance is a change of the direction of your heart. It is turning from your sins and turning to God. Repentance does not mean that your salvation hangs in the balance that you will never sin again. It is a change of the direction of your heart. And true belief in the Lord Jesus Christ will lead to a heart that constantly turns away from sin and turns to God. A life that has assurance of salvation in Jesus Christ will lead you to repentance. A person that has accepted the free gift of salvation will be led to repentance constantly. The Christian journey is not that I will never ever sin, and because I sin today, my destiny is now hell, and because I don't sin tomorrow, my destiny is now heaven. No, that is not right. The Christian journey is accepting the free gift of salvation, which leads you to turning away from your sins and turning to God. It is the direction of your heart. This is why the Bible says, pursue holiness. No one other than the Lord Jesus Christ will attain perfect holiness, but we are all to pursue it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. True salvation looks to Jesus Christ. True salvation does not look within. True salvation looks without. True salvation looks to Jesus Christ. How can I be sure I am saved? Is it by living a perfect life? Is it by earning my way to heaven? Is it by praying the sinner's prayer? Acts chapter 16, verse 31, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and your household. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Don't believe in a prayer you made 20 years ago. Don't believe in your good works. Don't believe in your thin veneer of righteousness. 
believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. This is sending churchgoers to hell because they have not fully depended on the Lord Jesus Christ. They are depending on their good works. This is why one day they are sure and the next day they are not. I am tired of so-called ministers of the gospel who are trying to separate the Christian faith from Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you are following doctrines of devils. Without Jesus Christ, you are following seducing spirits. Without Jesus Christ, you are led astray. Without Jesus Christ, you are on the train to hell. Without Jesus Christ, there is no life. Without Jesus Christ, there is no hope. Without Jesus Christ, there is no redemption of sin. Without Jesus Christ, there is no forgiveness. Without Jesus Christ, there is no shedding of blood. Repent and believe.